Joy here. Thursday morning, last day of April 2020. Tomorrow is May. May is going to be a wonderful month. People are going to get to go outside again. We're going to get to go back to work again. <laughs> I just feel good and I hope you do too. So, here's the thing. I grounded myself yesterday. <laughs> Oh, let me take a sip. I just made this and then I'll tell you. Half cap in this one and whipped cream. Okay, so here's the deal, Neil. I grounded myself. I was going to remake all my videos. You know, I erased all the videos of me quilting the first placemat. It's all done, but I'm not going to show it to you because I want you to see me from start to finish. So, I made all the videos. I had the camera right up in my face. You could see all my wrinkles and my tensions and everything and right up really close to my hand. And I deleted all of them on my camera. <laughs> my husband's still downstairs lecturing me on it. <laughs> Don't you have some kind of backup system, Joy? <laughs> and, you know, Jerry and I, one of the reasons you haven't seen me doing a lot of sewing or anything right now is because Jerry and I are doing our own repairs and our own painting so yeah i grounded myself i said listen here young lady you are not doing placemats sewing quilting painting or anything until you get this fabric folded <laughs> so i did <laughs> i'm down to about six pieces left and i started out with probably over 20 and i got them all rolled on the bolts and put away on the shelf so yeah, I'm really excited. And um, so today I'm going to quilt another placemat from start to finish. You said, where did you get the pattern, Joy? If you watch all my videos, you know these things because they all kind of connect together in one way or another. <laughs> so this pattern was in the Block Magazine. Volume 7, Issue 1, 2020, and I wish they would put numbering them like that. It drives me crazy. I never know if this is January, June, September. I never know what's what. I hate the way they number their books. Volume 7, Issue 1. Volume 7, Issue 1. What does Volume 7 mean? This is the first of 2020, and it's just so confusing. But anyway, maybe one of you can explain it to me. So in this book, there were two things that I really, really liked. And one of them was this table runner. And you can see the table runner has stars going down the middle of it. Well, I didn't want stars going down the middle of mine because I decided to make placemats with it. So that's where the pattern came from. Now, I just got another book. I just got another book yesterday, Block Magazine. And in the next book, Jenny has made an entire quilt out of those little houses. There must be over 100 of them in the quilt, maybe 200. A whole quilt is those little blocks. But what she did in that quilt was she fussy cut the doorways. So one doorway has this skeleton looking out of it and one has a little kid looking out of it and one will have an old man looking out of it and one will have an octopus looking out of it or something. <laughs> so that's lots of fun. And she didn't do the stars in the middle. She just, and she did her houses like my boo-boo. Remember my boo-boo one where the houses were, these were right side up and these were right side up. Hers are all right side up in her new quilt. So they're too small for the long arm. The backing is already on them, they're already finished. So there's no long arming. So I'm putting them on my Bernina B740. I think it's 740. And I'm going to use the amazing Bernina Stitch Regulator. When I first got that machine several years ago, I used that and I made a friend of mine a mug rug and I used that stitch regulator and it's just awesome, I just love it. So I'm gonna put that on for those of you who have it and have never used it, I'm going to tell you how it works. And I want to tell you now how I decided how I'm going to quilt the placemats. I knew that I was just going to straight stitch. I was just going to quilt over all the roofs 
do all the roofs and then I come in and I go down over up across the door down over up do this roof and then down over up over down over up do that roof and then down over up down over up down over up with the even feed foot and a regular presser foot okay that's what I'm going to do all that straight stitching with. Then I'm going to put on the stitch regulator and I am going to stitch in the middle something that looks like wind, wind and clouds. And I didn't know what I was going to do. So, you know, there's thousands of pantographs out there. And so I just Googled quilting pantograph wind, quilting pantograph sky. And then all of these pantographs came up. And so I found this one that I thought was real fun. So I printed this out and then I started tracing it with a pencil or a pen or something. And so my hand could kind of get an idea. Really, really helps. So I'm not copying it. I'm going to freehand mine. Mine isn't going to look anything like this other than this gave me an idea of how to start. So I'm not Dealing any copyright, <laughs> but it gave me an idea of how to start and kind of what wind could look like, all right? So that's how I figured out what pattern, design, I'm going to use in the sky part of these placemats. I'm going to use Aurafil thread. Why Aurafil thread? It doesn't matter. I could use Isocord thread. I could use Madeira thread. I could use regular thread. It doesn't really matter. It's just that the um, the Aurafil thread is what Edita Sitar uses, and it seems to be a higher quality thread than others, and it goes through the needle really well. And yes, I use the same thread in the bobbin as I use on top. Always, 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 always. I may use a different color on the bottom than the top, but it'll still be the same thread. Coats and Clark, Isocord, Aurafil, whatever. Same top and bottom. The only time I don't do that is when I use the invisible thread. Now invisible thread will drive you crazy. Even the good stuff. <laughs> and then you can't iron it and it's just you've got cotton on the bottom. You can't use it on the bottom. I, I've tried it just does not work on the bottom. So you have the invisible, on, the invisible thread on top and the regular thread on the bottom. I used it a lot when I first started quilting then I decided it was just a nuisance and I haven't used it in a long time. But sometimes you do need to. Sometimes you do need to. So don't think oh, you're never ever going to use it. Just remember it's going to take a bucket extra of patience. Maybe two buckets. <laughs> All right. I told you where the pattern was. I told you how I figured out how I wanted to quilt it. I told you what I was going to quilt it with. Let's get started. <laughs> This is my setup. Somebody said, where did you put your wool mat and where did you put your iron? Over here, right here, there is a, it's about a six foot long table. It's just a folding table where the legs fold up, you know, you get them at Sam's. It's where I put my mat the other day and my little iron. Now, I've never done this before because I always make myself walk over to the ironing board, but with those little bitty houses and having to change them and put one house going up, one house going down, next one going up, next one going down, I would have had to walk them back, walk them back, walk them back, walk them back. <laughs> so I set this up and it worked great. So that's where it is. It just You can buy these tables in lots of different sizes. I probably own half a dozen of them. And I just love it. Okay. So this is the sewing machine that has the Bernina stitch regulator on it, okay? I'm going to turn it on. This is my B740. I bought it, I don't know, four years ago now. I bought one directly from the store. It was a demo, and so I got a good price on it, and I traded in two of my sewing machines. Believe it or not, I actually traded in two of my sewing machines. Okay. This is the machine I'm going to use. I'm going to use, let me take this off and show it to you for those of you who don't know what it is. Let me see, maybe I should turn the machine off first. You know, some of these things you're not supposed to plug them in or unplug them when the machine's on. This is the box it comes in. 
It ought to be a nice box. I think this thing is like $800. Good Lord, it may be more than that now. I could be wrong. Maybe it was $300. You guys will have to check. Me and Jerry just laughs at me every time I talk about money. I told somebody our house was 3,000 square feet the other day. Jerry said, Joy, it's 5,000 square feet. I said, oh. <laughs> okay. So this is the box that comes in. It comes with three feet. It comes with this little round clear foot. And it comes with this foot, which is a closed, a closed circle. And then it comes with the one I'm using, which is the open circle. See? And that's the one I like. I like to see where I'm going. So I've never even used these other two feet. Okay, so you can see what it is. It's Bernina Stitch Regulator, and it only works on some of their machines. It doesn't work on all of them. This is it. It's just this cute little thing right here. <laughs> see, isn't it cute? But it's got a major computer brain going on in it, and it's awesome. So I'm going to hook it back up. I'm going to hook it back up. And then I'm going to tell you how it works. Before I go around to the other side, let me show you where you plug the little thing in. Right here is a drawing of this thing. It's like, hello, here I am. Right there, a little picture of me. And so you stick this little doohickey into that hole right there, okay? And then I'm going to turn my machine back on. Now I'm going to go around to the front and show you how it works. So I've got the, the uh, stitch regulator plugged in in that little hole that you saw. Now you have to hook it on like you would a presser foot, okay? So I'm going to stick it on this hook here and attach it. I am using a Schmetz Microtech 7010. It's what was in here. It seems to be working, so I'm still using it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. Now, what you want to do before you start any project. Now, remember, <laughs> this is the Joy Bernhardt channel, and everything I tell you is nothing more than how I do it. I may have learned it from you, I may have learned it from a book, I may have learned it years ago when I first started sewing, but this is how I do it. You all figure out the best way for you, okay? But people ask me, show us this, show us that, show us this, show us that. So this is how I do it. When I'm getting ready to quilt on the sewing machine, and I haven't done it for a long time, and even if I have, <laughs> I want to make sure that everything's working well, I make myself a little messy quilt, just a little play quilt. You can see I've been practicing on it. I make a little play quilt. The other day when I started this, I have one placemat done y'all. I recorded it for you and then I erased it. <laughs> I deleted it on my camera. So I made this fake quilt. It's just a piece of the backing, 100% cotton, folded in half with a piece of batting in it. And then I sewed around the edges to hold it together, okay? Then, I use this little thing. And if anybody knows what this is called, will you please tell me? I would love to buy a bigger one. But I, can't, I put silicone mat, I put quilting mat, I put sewing machine mat, I put pressure foot mat, I put everything in the world. I could not find this, so if y'all know what it's called. <laughs> so, this goes down here, this little hole in the middle, Here's where your needle's going to go up and down. So you have to place your little, the little hole on your machine in that hole. Okay? So now my thread is up through the little hole and it's there. Then you have to get your gloves. You have to have gloves. Where's my gloves? There's lots of different versions of these quilting gloves, but they really help. They've got these little non-slip grip fingertips on them. Okay. Now. How does this thing work? How does this stitch regulator work? I ask myself that every time I get it out. And every time I get it out, I can't remember if this machine came with a book, I don't think it did. Or if you're supposed to go online in this little computer area right here and find the manual, I never can remember. 
So I just called Bernina <laughs> and I say, how the heck does this thing work? <laughs> so here's how it works. Right here in the window, this computer window, you can see it says BSR. If it doesn't say BSR in the window, then you don't have it hooked up right and it doesn't know it's there. And under this BSR, there's a number one and a number two and a speaker. So I think you can actually turn that speaker off. How cool is that? So then you can't hear the noise? I don't know. Let's see what it does. Let me get the proper stylus here. I'm going to leave that on just to see what it does. Then there's a two and there's a one. Do you see that? A two and a one. So it says BSR, one, two, speaker, and X. So this is how it works. There's two ways to turn the thing on. You can turn it on. Let's put it down. You can turn it on by holding the foot control down. Do you see how it just turned red right there and it's going up and down? Let go of the foot control and it stops. Or, if you don't want to use the foot control at all, you can hold in this green on-off button right here, hold it in, and watch that turn red again. See how it turned red and it started sewing? Okay, so that's the two ways. Turn it off. That's the two ways you can turn it on and off. All right, what does number one mean? Number one means that as long as you're moving, that needle's going to go up and down. But when you quit moving, even if it's on, it's red light and it's on, when you quit moving, the needle quits going up and down. Okay? That's number one. Number two means that you keep on sewing, you come to a point, you want to stop a little bit, so it gets the point real good, the needle keeps on going up and down, and then you can start moving again. All right. So I've completely cleaned the bobbin case out, took a Q-tip, cleaned everything out really good, oiled it, put the thing back together. So it should be very happy. So now I'm going to take my sample. Now, you know, I just did this the other day, but what I do, what I started with, was I just drew a design on here. Okay? I just drew a design on here to see if I could copy it. So, that's what I'll do today. That's what you can do, and you got your little grippy gloves on, and it's so much fun. And then we're going to figure out how we want to do it. I don't want to do the foot control, so I'm just going to push this until it gets red, and I'm going to do it on number one, which means it keeps on going. And what's your stitch control? It's whatever you, uh, let me see, maybe it's right here. Let's turn it up to three and see if it gets bigger. Yes. You choose your stitch length, and that's your foot control. Look how easy it is to move, you guys. And you know, if you don't follow your tracing exactly, it doesn't matter, because your tracing is going to go away. Isn't this fun? I love doing this, y'all. And then you keep on going. I'm just off on my own, just playing. Okay, how big can I do this? Let's make a star. How cute! Now how do you stop? Push that and it stops. Raise it up. Raise the needle. And cut. Okay. So you can see my quilting. Right down here. I went and then I just went off on my own down here and I made a heart and I made a star. And you can see it better right there. Fun, fun, fun till your daddy takes the tea bird away. Ah, let's get the place back. <laughs> I did my favorite thing and I forgot to put record on. <laughs> So remember, I printed this off, and then I followed it. I followed it, just to get an idea of what you're supposed to do, and went, oh, that looks like good wind. Now, I am not copying it exactly. I'm just trying to get the feel of it. Then I'm going to use my 
friction pen that goes away with the iron. Because I may change this 27 times before I get to the sewing machine. <laughs> okay. I don't like what I did there. So I'm getting that off. All right. So we're coming back. So that goes. I've got it upside down. Yeah, it goes like this and up and over and down and then up here and then then I've got to change it because I need to come down here to this spot. See? So then I'm going to go like this and make it big. And then I'm going to come make a zero and then go this way and this way. And see, I'm completely changing it now. Yeah, it's writing better now. Very good. See how this doesn't look anything like the picture now? I just got an idea of what I wanted to do, the kind of curves that I wanted to make it look like wind. Okay, so we're going to make some wind in here. And then that doesn't go together, but you get the idea, okay? You can play with this all you want to, okay? So that's how I decide what I'm going to quilt before I go over there to the sewing machine. You can see the part that's still there. All right. I shall return back at the sewing machine. What time is it, boys and girls? It's howdy doody time. <laughs> how do these things pop in my brain? <laughs> it's quilting time. I've got my design all drawn on here. Now I erased and redid it and erased and redid it and erased, had I erased with the iron and redid it and redid it and redid it to something I like. Now, I discovered the other day that instead of trying to quilt it like this and it getting all crunched up over here, I quilted it from one end. I quilted it this way. Start here and then you just have to move it a little bit because I'm going down the center. And I did it this way and it worked great. Okay, so let's see if I can do this right the first time because it's one o'clock and I need to go fix lunch. I'm going to put it on two because I want it to keep going up and down, up and down. And I'm going to turn off the speaker. I don't really know what noise it makes, but we're going to turn it off. All right, let's push this until it turns red and it's red. Okay, let's go. And then we're going to put it on a three. Evidently, when you're on the edge, it doesn't work right because it has to be completely covered with fabric under that light. So if you're hanging over the edge, it doesn't like to work. Come on, let's move. It doesn't seem like it's keeping on going to me. And you know it always works better when you're not on camera. And I didn't put any pins in it. And I probably should have done that because it's not um, packed down. But I didn't. We'll see how it works. It's at least working right now. So I'm ready for that. And you're going to keep on going up and down when I stop? Yes, you are. That gives you a nice point when it does that. Even on the long arm, you probably can't even hear me talking. Which is probably a good thing. Now see, I'm not exactly on these lines. I'm from the back of a running horse. Pshh. You know, if you eat dinner on a place mat riding a horse, you'll never notice it. That's the good thing about quilting. Nobody ever sees your mistakes like you do. That's the truth. And if you all want to start quilting, start this way. You know what? Make a mug rub. You know what I did for a friend one time? I printed on that printer fabric a page out of a calendar. It was really cute. It had a bus on it going up and down a road. And I quilted it, made a mug rug out of it. It was really cute. She probably burned it. She was the friend I was telling you about the other day that doesn't like me anymore. I wish I knew why, but I don't. Now, I made a boo-boo there, but nobody's going to know it if I don't tell them. I crossed over my stitching. 
that bad? Only if you think it is. <laughs> is so much fun y'all. On the first one I did the houses first and so it was already pretty much tacked down with my house quilting. This time I'm doing this first so I can show you guys. Here's the part with the pink that I just sewed over. I'm going to iron it and all that pink is going to disappear and here's the back of it. Now does that look like wind? It does. Looks like the wind in this town. <laughs> oh my goodness. Here's my placemat with all the pink lines off of it. Now we're going to go do the houses. Now I'm going to quilt the houses. And I'm going to use the open toe foot. And I'm going to use the even feed open toe foot. Because we all know now, that's why Joy bought the machine. That's right. So I'm going to come down, over, up the door, over the door, down, over. Let me see. Then am I going to go up, up and do the roof? I can only do one house at a time if I do it that way. How can I be continuous? You want to be continuous. So let me see if I come down here, over here, up, over, down, over, up. I would have to come back down again on that line. But I could. Now since this is quilted in the middle, I'm not going to have any problem with everything staying together. We're going to get off of the BSR and it knows it's not there anymore. So now we're back on the straight stitch and I'm going to set the straight stitch on. Oh, maybe 3.0. Because, you know, you want it to look like quilting. Even though I'm stitching in the ditch on this part. Okay. Why isn't it moving? Oh, hey, I forgot to tell you guys something really, really, really important. You're probably saying, Joy, 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 you forgot to tell them, you forgot to tell them, you forgot to tell them. I did. The feed dogs have to be down. If you're going to do freehand quilting with the needle just flying up and down, you have to have the feed dogs down. So the feed dog down department is over here, over there, right here, on this, over here. <laughs> you push this button in for no feed dogs and then back out. So I'm sewing in the ditch. I could sew the whole way down. I think I will. I just had a brilliant idea. I'm going to sew the whole way down. I'm going to add some pins to it too, just to keep it from scooching when I scooch. I'm going to sew the whole way down on this seam line that's above the houses and below the roof. So I am just going to go all the way down. I'm trying to stay in the ditch. Sometimes I stay in it and sometimes I don't. But that'll just make it look all the more quilted, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know, every other one, the ditch is the opposite direction. Okay, now that got that done really quick. I like that idea. That was a good way, Joyry. All right, here we go. Now we're going to do all the points on the roofs. All the points. We're going to go up the point and down the point. So the roofs, one, two, three, four, five roofs are all done. I went straight down under the roofs and then did all the points. So now I'm going to come down the side of the house here because I want the very edges of these placemats top stitched. All right, now I'm going to go up and around the door. Up and around the door. Now this is just normal sewing. This is like sewing a seam. You just have to follow the road. Follow the yellow brick road, which is all different colors, but the road is the seam. The road is the seam. 
And if your stitch um, length lands in the wrong place, just stop the machine, back it up, put the needle where you want it. Okay, now I'm going to put this where I want it because it didn't land in the right place. I'm going to back it up and hold my mouth funny. You have to hold your mouth real funny. Like when you put a contact in. Did I put my contact in today? Yeah, I think I did. Why am I wearing glasses? <laughs> I just wear one contact lens because one eye sees close up and one eye sees far away. <clears throat> Okay, so now I went up the side of the house and now I'm at the roof again. So I'm going to go back down. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to go back down between the yellow house and the red house. I'm going to go back down where those two houses butt up against each other. So there will be two lines of stitching right there. And then i got to line my needle up again because uh, it didn't land in the right place. All right. Now we're going to do the blue door. Some song about a blue door. What was that song? We're going to go up between the red house and the blue house, right in the crack of the seam. We are stitching in the ditch. And since those are pressed flat, that's a real easy one to go up and stay in it. <clears throat> now we're going to turn it around and go back down. Right there. I will finish this off camera and then I'll show it to you. I have this house done and this house done. So I've got one, two, three, plus five, that's eight more houses. And then I'll show it to you when it's all done. It's 2.30 in the afternoon, and I now have two placemats completely done. I have one, two placemats ready, and I'm going to use them. I really am. I'm going to wait until we're done with the painting. My kitchen looks like a tool shed right now. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Jerry brings in more tools every day. He came in the other day. And he had a big box on the bottom and a medium box in the middle and a little box on top. And he carries them all in the house and puts them down on the bar in the kitchen. There's like one of those Dremel tool things and some of those sharp bladed exacto knife things and a box of wrenches or rivets or ratchets or whatever. So anyway, <laughs> ah, I'm talking about you go away. He just came up here, y'all, to work in this bathroom. Look at what he hauled up here with him. Look at, see? See what I mean? Look. Yeah. <laughs> Look what's on his knees. <laughs> what are you doing, Sideburn? Why do you have one glove on? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Where's your other glove? Downstairs, I guess. <laughs> this is the upstairs bathroom, and he's working on this part down here that when the company came they got too much water outside the shower and it messed up the woodwork so it's almost all fixed except for that little tiny place right there see it and when he gets through with it it will be perfect this whole thing was brown and messed up with water damage and Jerry fixed it and it looks brand new he's pretty amazing huh of course y'all already knew that all right I'm not quite sure what I just got on this camera <laughs> But I'm done for the day, y'all. I'll be back tomorrow when we'll talk about Fit Nice, okay? <laughs> but bye for now.